Today we're looking at the final problem of week zero from CS50's introduction to programming with Python. So this one is tip calculator. And if we read through it, it says in the United States, it's customary to leave a tip for your server after dining in a restaurant, typically an amount equal to 15% or more of your meal's cost. Not to worry though, we've written a tip calculator for you below. Well, we've written most of a tip calculator for you. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to implement two functions. Dollars to float, which should accept a string as input, remove the leading dollar sign and return the amount as a float. For instance, given $50 as input, it should return 50. Percent to float, which should accept a string as input, remove the trailing uh, percent sign and return the percentage as a float. For instance, given 15% as input, it should return 0 0.15. Assume that the user will input values in the expected formats. So we've been provided the majority of the code already. We've just got these two functions to complete. The first one is going to take a string as input, a dollar amount, uh, for example, $50, and should return 50 as a float. So if we write that in here, if we take 50 as an input, then we want to return 50 as a float like this. And the second function should accept a string as input again, this time a percentage, and also return a float. So if we get 15% as the input, then we're looking to return a decimal as a percentage, so 0 0.15. So if we run a quick test case for this, so we can say $50 at 15%, and we should be looking for a return of 750. And if we got $15, oops, $15 at 25%, then our return should be 375. Let's first take a look at the dollars to float function. So the first step is converting our string to a float. And for this, we can use the built-in float function, which is gonna convert our string to a floating point value. Uh, similar to the uh, int function that we used in the last problem. So we can say float and then pass, oops, float, and then pass as the argument d, which is our variable up here, that we're passing to the function. The problem with this, if we were to test this now, we'd get back a value error because obviously Python doesn't know what to do with the dollar sign. It can't convert symbols into floating point values. So we need to make sure that we handle the removing of the leading dollar sign before we try to use the float function, else we're going to run into problems uh, later on. So there's a few ways we can do this. Even if we stick to just using the built-in string methods, we still have a few options. We could use the replace method again that we've been using. So we could say replace, and the first argument would be the dollar sign. The second argument would be nothing because we would just want to re uh, remove it. If I'm being honest, I'm not 100% sure how all of these methods are implemented under the hood, so to speak. But I would imagine that replace is going to be more costly than the next two options just because it's searching the whole string. And we could use the optional third argument and we could put a one in here, which means it's just going to find the first instance and replace it. But even so, I don't think this is the best method for the job. So the other two methods are the else strip and remove prefix method. And if we look at the docs for else strip first, it says return a copy of the string with leading characters removed. The char's argument is a string specific, uh, specifying the set of characters to be removed. If omitted or none, then the char's argument defaults to removing the white space. The char's argument is not a prefix, rather all, combina all combinations of its values are stripped. And the definition for remove prefix says if the string starts with the prefix string, return string, essentially with the prefix sliced off the beginning, otherwise return a copy of the original string. Now, for our use case, both of these methods are going to work in the exact same way. But just to try and give you an example of how they differ, the main difference being the parameters of remove prefix are considered as a substring, whereas the parameters of else strip are considered as a set of characters. So what does this mean? If we take a sample string here and we run both methods, we can see the difference between the two. So the first one is only removing ABC, which is the actual substring that we're passing. Whereas in the second one, it's removing A, B, C, and then it's removing B, C, A, C as well, because it's taking each of those characters, the A, the B, and the C, as individual characters rather than a substring. And it's removing all of them until it reaches something that no longer matches, which is the T from test. And if we just look at one more example, this time we've got a different example string. So this time it's A, B, C, A, B, C, and then test. 
we can see that remove prefix is not removing multiple copies of that prefix. It's only removing the first ABC or the first substring, whereas LStrip is removing all copies as it's removing each of the characters individually and it's not looking at individual substrings. So there is different use cases for both of these. But as I said, in our case, since we've only got one uh, symbol to remove, we can use either one and I think they're going to work in exactly the same way. So I'm going to use the remove prefix for this. So, and then we'll pass in our dollar sign. Oops. And since all we're doing is returning this value back to our main function, we don't need to use a variable anywhere. We can just return everything like this and keep our function uh, all on one line. Now, if we just get all of this out of the way, we can move on to our second function, which is the percent float. We're going to do a similar thing here. So we'll convert our string to a float. So we'll say float and this time the argument is going to be P and we're going to return this straight away as well. But this time we need to remove the percentage sign from the end of our string rather than the start. So we can use R strip for this, which is um, the same as L strip, but it removes the characters from the end or the right side instead of the left side. Or we can use the method called remove suffix, which is the same thing, but the opposite of remove prefix. So I'll use that. I'll say remove um, suffix and then this is going to be a percent sign. Oops. And there is one final step on this function since we're converting a fraction to a decimal. So we need to divide the whole thing by 100 and then we can return that to our main function. Okay, so those two functions are now complete. We can jump over to our terminal and give it a quick test. So we can say python tip.py. Oops. And we're getting prompted, how much was the meal? Let's use our test case, 50. How much would you like to tip? Let's say 15%. Uh, and we're getting back $7.50, which is correct. And if we do one more test, we can put $15. And this time we'll tip 25%. And we're getting back $3.75, which again is correct. So it looks like everything is working. Our calculations are correct. If you have a different solution, then feel free to share it in the comments below. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this.